right, well, I'm uh, Derek. And I'm Jesse. From Ashes of Abaddon, we are holding the uh, latest copy of our debut album, The Infected. The only copy. <laughs> At this point, yeah, <laughs> the only copy. Uh, so we thought we'd just go through and break down some of the songs for you guys. Uh, maybe a little bit of musical history, lyrical history, whatever happens to come to mind on this thing. Why don't you explain track one, which is called The Start of War? <laughs> the Start of War. So we typically have an intro to Turn of the Fist for our live shows, um, and we wanted to, to put that on the album to give it that same live feel. Uh, we made this Start of War, which is, uh, as it intros to Turn of the Fist, which is kind of about starting a war, basically. The start of the war is just a quick little intro just to give you uh, the idea that, you know, that this war is about to happen right before Turn of the Fist comes in. It's, uh, you just gotta imagine being at, say, an army base where suddenly there's gonna be an attack. <laughs> What makes Turn of the Fist unique on this album, do you think? Boy, it, it really is our uh, uh, our thrasher, our just jump in and start going at it. It's real chuggy, it's uh, it's just going, it's driving, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good one to bang your head to, right off the bat especially. Uh, funny thing about Turn of the Fist, uh, Brett actually named it, um, <laughs> as he had a set of lyrics, um, just said out of nowhere, oh, Turn of the Fist, I got lyrics for this song, and oh, cool, and he couldn't find it, so I just kind of went with the name because I like the name and wrote some lyrics to it. I guess from a lyrical standpoint, a work of fiction from the perspective of, like it has some really strong religious tones to it, um, relating to the history of the world from a alternate biblical perspective, I guess would be a, a good way to classify that. And so this song is lyrically written from the standpoint of this character's alternate perspective. Um, but still wanted to keep it kind of, what was Brett, I don't know, you or Brett always says, why do you got to write these things so damn cryptic? <laughs> yeah, it might be Brett. Yeah, that's like, a like Brett thing. I don't want to just like say, hey, here's the lyrics. This is how I want you to understand it. So you know, take it for what it's worth. But um, I don't know there's some some stuff that goes on musically. There's angry bees in this song, or maybe it's angry dogs with angry bees shooting out of their mouth <laughs> towards the end of the song. Nice. up would be Damnation. Damnation. Yeah, this, this is... Yeah, this one's kind of fun. Um, it, uh, I had some drum tracks lately around and I just kind of threw them together then started playing the guitar and wrote a whole song that way. I've never tried doing it that way before. Really? Um, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know you started the drum tracks. Yeah, I had some drum tracks just laying around, just some oh. random ones, and I'm like, oh, I'll just play along with this and just make something. And sure enough, uh, you know, it came out with a guitar part. Brett came up with uh, his own drum set for it because, you know, obviously it was just, I think it was a computer generated one. So, um, and then I think Derek had to do a couple tweaks because I'm not a guitarist, so <laughs> he came up, made a couple tweaks to make it sound right, and from there we just blasted through it. Um, lyrically, I started out with uh, a set of lyrics and we ended up with one more set of uh, verses that I needed help with, and so I threw it at Derek and he came up with the last part of it. Um, as well as uh, kind of right before we got the album pretty much done, he came up with the uh, little lead at the end there, and uh, we threw the wine just despite Brett. <laughs> Derek is pretty much the mastermind behind this, but if I must say so, uh, thanks to this song, I actually. Got to watch a whole series of a show that I'd never known about before, um, and I'll let him explain that. Well, I mean, the show is Twin Peaks. I think if you uh, are already a fan of Twin Peaks, then you're going to recognize the song titled Leland. Um, but yeah, I think right now, both of us are pretty big uh, Twin Peaks fans, and 
most likely David Lynch fans as well. Um, I remember first kind of the the rough structure of Leland from a guitar standpoint was mostly written to follow Leland's uh, kind of unpredictable nature, I guess. So there's uh, some some faster tempoed stuff and some regular tempoed stuff, and um, I'm trying to think how the the song kind of winds it. Then there's like the lo there's some some real low tempo. Uh, yeah, the end really. Stuff, yeah, the end really kind of almost portrays Leland's end. Yeah, because it it just comes down to that low, you know, here it is in your face yeah. moment, you know. And I believe this is the only song where there's cowbell. Ooh, yes. Sadly, yeah. said not not much. That, that is true. Yeah, <laughs> you always use more cowbell. Yeah, we all have the fever. <laughs> <laughs> Then we go into Gain End, and this is pretty much, uh, I think it's probably one of the first songs we started working as a band, wouldn't you say? Yeah, probably. Um, um, Gain End is one that I wrote long, long, long ago. Um, it's probably one of the first songs I ever wrote front to back, lyrics, music, everything. Um, brought it to the band, and we modified it just enough to get it to fit in. Um, there was, uh, it went through quite a few changes, actually. Um, Derek actually came in and put a couple parts in there to, to kind of liven it up, I guess. Um, especially when it came down to an instrumental standpoint. Oh. Um, the little da 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 That part. And a little the, kung fu move in there. Yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, anytime you're at a live show, watch this guy when, uh, when that part comes up. You'll see, you'll see a foot go to somebody's face. It's all about my love of Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Answer the dragon. Yeah. Um, and lyrically, it's uh, pretty depressing, uh, quite honestly. I just wanted to die that night, and so instead of doing it, I wrote about it. And sometimes that's what it takes to keep going in life. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much the uh, the gain is uh, the name of it. Gain end. Um, gain was actually the gain of a guitar, and in, in other words, I was adjusting how much you know distortion, and the end was just. You know, it was the end of life, so, but that's, yeah, it's kind of a weird how, how songs come together sometimes like that. I dying from within. Brings us to Leaf of Autumn, which um, I wrote in a, a particularly down and depressed mood. I was feeling and I just remember driving and it was late fall and there was just one leaf hanging on this barren tree and I'm thinking man that's exactly how I feel right now so I just started uh, throwing down ideas lyrically for this song Leaf of Autumn about being that last leaf on the tree everybody else is maybe a little bit more cryptic again in the way the <laughs> lyrics were written but uh, that's that's kind of, that's kind what of where is, we but... differ quite a bit you you go more cryptic and I just kind of hey yeah. here's how it is um, read Leaf of Autumn's lyrics uh, you'll find them out there um, it's it's one that we get a lot of comments on um, Derek did a really good job with that. Cursed. Oh, oh man. curse. Uh, I so too. Cursed. Uh, you guys don't know how lucky you are to have this song yeah. right now. This is one that uh, almost got banned. Probably more because of me and just trying to figure well, out lyrics. And, well, I'll, I'll own up to part of that too because... Yeah. This was a song that was written lyrically, probably before it was written musically. Yeah, yeah we, uh, Derek came in, he had the music written, the music was awesome. We're like, man, this is like, you know, Devil Driver kind of heavy, kind of just driving like crazy. And uh, then he came out with this sheet of lyrics that were kind of just written. And it's like, here, try and make this work. All right. And it wasn't enough. I can't remember if that one had too much or not enough. Not too much. <laughs> too much on that one to put into the song. So it was always felt rushed. And um, it's like the 30 syllables in a four bar meter or something. Yeah. I think Brett always compared it to, uh, oh, what's yeah. that movie? Uh, uh, oh, uh, Bruce Almighty. The part where <laughs> yeah. Steve Carell is just, <laughs> <laughs> he always said, man, you sound just like that. Like, ah. All right, so then, uh, what, you, you, did you already have yeah. written? Well, no, I was working on some other lyrics it's at so the time cute. when we decided, like, you know what, these, are, these will kind of fit, I think, because yeah. they're a little bit of the same lines and, uh, I don't think I really paid much attention to the 
the structure of syllables because I think it was almost as bad. I took the two different structures that he did and the way I was I was putting them on to the song and just kind of rewrote it in a way that I could do it. You know, I mean, if Derek were to get up there on the mic and play guitar and sing at the same time, he probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Well, so he probably would. That's why I don't do that <laughs> very, very often at all. <laughs> it to me. But anyway, it, it, it turned out to be a great song in the end. I think we all, um, after we got used to where it sat, it was just, and we all knew where to come in on things. We all, I mean, everybody, I think, really liked Curse in the band. I think we all yeah. can agree that it's a good song. Where before, it was always, ah, can we skip that one? That one's... That's such a pain to, to play. Yeah, now, I mean, this is one of my favorite ones to hear from a vocal standpoint because of what you're able to do, you know, having the music at a time and writing new yeah. lyrics as much as I kind of was silently digging in my heels on this one because yeah. it's hard to part with stuff where you feel good about, but yeah. after hearing it, like, it, I mean, that's one of my favorite ones to hear yeah. from a, a lyrical ah, and awesome. vocal pattern standpoint. Oh, that's cool. It's, uh, it's definitely another one of those gain in kind of songs where it's got that uh, emotional aspect, but it's a little bit more coming back to that same feeling. It's almost like gain in two in a way. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's coming back from gain end and just seeing back on my life and knowing that uh, you know that's how I felt at one time and I think I'm going to feel that way again is kind of the uh, the idea behind the lyrical structure on that. Um, I think you waxed a little more poetic on this one, yeah. lyrically. Yeah, yeah, I kind of went more Derek style instead of, hey, everybody, I'm going to go slit my wrist <laughs> open, anybody want to join me? This one's a little bit more leaf bottomish uh, lyrically, where it's a little bit more cryptic. Um, musically, it's, uh, it's the only song that I do clean vocals on, just uh, almost experimental. It's always kind of been written that way, and so I just kind of wanted to be true to what it's always been. Um, I don't claim to be the best clear vocalist but it going from that to the the growls is is a lot of fun for me i like yeah. going going from that softer to boom oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna tear your face open kind of growls um so that one that one's pretty fun we put some uh, cool effects to actually mm. symbolize rain i mean it makes sense um and we all kind of have our challenges with every song this one <laughs> <laughs> so i think the the deal is that uh <laughs> Wetzel here has a, a different hand or finger structure than I do. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, you know, we won't draw. Oh, don't judge me. But the the distance that his fingers can travel on a fretboard are just a little bit different than mine. And so it's always a challenge to learn any new riff or song that that he brings to the table. And this one was one in particular that not only involved a finger span but a slide and a string jump. So. It's taken a long time to be able to pull it off with 85% consistency. Uh, well, we'll go with 85% accuracy. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, and what's funny when he mentions that is uh, I write things that's physically hard for Derek, and he writes like note structure that's mentally hard for me. It's it's weird how it works. Like if I wrote something simple enough physically, he could play it, and if he ever writes anything that's doesn't make me want to vomit when he plays it because I go, what the hell is that? But what's funny is, in the end, we both kind of look at it and go, man, that is actually awesome. You know, it just takes a little while to get used to it because that's, I don't know, it's just part of musicianship, I guess. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. There's some retaliation involved when I write a, a new lyrical piece or something to where I, uh, you know <laughs> yeah, what, because he wrote that part in the rain, I'm going to write a stanza of lyrics that he has yeah. to try to get through. Every time. <laughs> Uh, then that brings us to Advancing Doom, which Advancing is uh, Doom. another one that Jesse uh, brought in a good chunk of already done. <laughs> Myth, maybe not the whole thing. I'm trying to think. Uh, nope, you do have. Oh, I guess that one was. Uh, uh, this is uh, another cooperative song, Advancing right. Doom. We uh, I started out with uh, the taps and the strum all on one guitar, um, and it was. You could do it, it was just kind of muddy, but shortly after we wrote this song, uh, Justin came in, and so we split the, uh, J uh, Derek doing the tapping on the fretboard, and uh, Justin and I just doing the, the, the full sound to it, um, and then we needed a transition from that into something different, and, and Derek just, you know, whipped it out, as he always does. And, and then I wrote the guitar part. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, it was just kind of... Usually it doesn't happen that way for me because I, I uh, 
to, to try to say, it reminds me of Tenacious D, write something, write now, write it, make it good, write it, and I'll tell you if it's awesome. And so those kind of situations always stress me out, but for whatever reason, this one kind of yeah. came together just on its own, and it, it fit and it worked, and I was even kind of doubtful of it anyways, but then Jesse and Brett were like, no, no, no we got to keep that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, there we go. One. And uh, so, yeah, um, he got the, uh, the chorus down, I got the uh, verse. Um, then there was the, uh, the break. I think that was all you. Yeah, that's all you right there. Um, you came up that dun 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 Huh. Because I the think crazy... it was you. No, because I, I, that's, that's, that's one of those things that mentally I can't do. Ah. It's one of those mental things where you, oh, that's, yeah, huh. oh, that part right there, that's all you. I, yeah, like I said, I, I went, what? How are you? No, you can't do that. What? No, oh, that's awesome. Weird. Yeah, huh. this whole time I thought that was yours. Weird. <laughs> Maybe it was um, Brett's. Yeah, Brett, Brett wrote that part. <laughs> um, and then the end uh, is something that I came up with, and uh, uh, once we got Justin involved with yeah. it, with the two guitars, and I'm doing so all three of us are playing something uh, different, but all matches so well. Yeah, it's um, cool because it's, it's really a three-part guitar harmony, but you only ever hear two parts together. Mm -hmm. So when Justin and I come in, we're essentially playing the same thing, and then he'll keep something going and all, you know, throw down that, that second harmony, and then when you get used to that, and then he throws on that third harmony, but drops the first one, so you're hearing several different uh, harmony things at the end, which he wrote, which sound just awesome together. It's kind of a hybrid about learning about mortality and becoming immortal through murder. We, we, we kind of have a lot of songs about death. Yeah. <laughs> And then the next song, I mean, is probably our top song lyrically. Yeah, um, easily. I mean, easily. I don't think we've written a better song from a lyric standpoint. Have you ever seen that thing where the guy comes up to a piano and just sits there and then walks away and everybody calls him a genius? No, but I, I know where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's our instrumental song, Andromeda. Musically, uh, it was a lot of Derek. Um, the bass parts that I play are pretty obvious, but uh, Derek came in with that crazy dual acoustic thing going on um, right off the bat and then right into the heavy part. Uh, Your Burton-esque bass solo I yeah. think is another thing that just it just felt like it needed to have something yeah. there and uh, you pulled yeah. it out and nailed it. Something like that. I would yeah. call it Burton quality but... <laughs> that I would. That's what I hear when I listen to it. It's, yeah, you know, I think it sounds good. good. Brett goes crazy in that song. He, he has yeah. a lot of fun with the toms on that. I love yeah. that about uh, about that song is, man, he just gets in there and yeah. some of the speed of his songs, man, that's awesome. Yeah, so check out, when you listen to that song, really pay attention to, to how quick he's hitting those toms, it's, it's badass. There's an infection of epidemic proportion that's plagued every major city and population of the world. Message from the president. Yeah, that is our uh, Brett Widmer claim to fame. Yeah. He gets to portray the uh, political figure he's always wanted to be and may indeed come become someday. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, a message of warning, kind of written to parallel some of the, the old zombie posters from the 70s and specifically uh, Night of the Living Dead where the news broadcast comes on talking about the dead coming back to life. And so it was written with that, but instead of a newscast, more of a, a presidential warning. Um, and that's all Brett Widmer that you hear talking with his yeah, the perfect whiskey voice infused. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Cigar smoking voice. So. Yeah, the most metal president ever. Yep. The artwork, yeah. the theme comes from, and the title theme is actually from the song that follows the message from the president, which would be The Infected. Uh, and that's another one where you probably wrote a, a, a good chunk of that song already, or at least yeah. had some solid riffs down that were just... Yeah, it was uh, just a collection of various riffs that I never knew what to do with and I kind of showed Derek all of them and he's he put them together he he took all the pieces of the puzzle that I made and put it together because I didn't know what to do with any of it so. but I think uh, having Justin come on board too we were able to do so much more with the second guitarist where uh, before to do any kind of a lead you'd have to drop what you were doing mm -hmm. rhythmically from a live standpoint so now we can you know do a lot more of those types of yeah. harmonies and lead works and yeah. things like that Lyrically, uh, 
Actually, it was a, a game called um, Left for Dead I was playing. Um, it's about just surviving the apocalypse, and it's like, man, you know, what would it be like to actually tread? Like, if you're if you're going to explain the here's the cliff notes of what you have to prepare for for the apocalypse. Here's what you're going to experience, and so that's kind of where Infected came in. It tells a story musically in yeah. addition to lyrically, which is, oh, I think, absolutely. the cool thing about it. Yeah. Um, if you kind of follow the lyrics and what that theme would be, musically it follows a similar uh, swoop of yeah. uh, events and emotions, I think. Absolutely. Um, and then it ends really strong with the, the closing out effects. Um, just really kind of punches you in the face at the end.